Hey everyone, welcome to the Conservation of Energy Part 2. Today we're first going to focus on how to find velocity when you have kinetic energy and how we, found, how we find lost energy when something bounces. Make sure you have a calculator. Let's get started. So as a review from last week, when we think about energy, we can think about a roller coaster or just a ball bouncing. So before this drops, we have potential energy. Why? Because we have some height, and I'll tell you that height in a moment. Now, this is also the total energy in the system. Why is that? Well, this is the start of our situation. Now, as this ball drops, it's going to go all the way down to the bottom where there is a height of zero. So this means that we have no potential energy. All this potential energy is now kinetic energy. Now we know from last week that my kinetic energy equation has velocity in it. So our question right now is how do I find this velocity? Let's try it out. So let's say in this situation, let's just have some easy numbers here. So let's say my height is one meter and the mass of my ball is one kilogram. And remember for gravity, just be lazy, we're just gonna use 10 meters per second squared. So we're gonna start off with our potential energy at the top, which is also our total energy. Why? Beginning of the system. So I have mass times gravity times height, which is one times 10 times one. So my potential energy is 10 joules. This means my total energy in the system is also 10 joules. Now, as this thing falls, okay, at the very bottom, my kinetic energy is now completely transformed into 10 joules. Why? My height is zero. So our next question would be, well, what is the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground? So I need to look at my kinetic energy equation, one half mv squared. And we're going to plug in some numbers and solve for v. So remember my kinetic energy at the bottom is 10. Then I have one half times my mass and v squared. So to get rid of this one half, I can multiply both sides by two, okay? And then to get my final answer, all I need to do is take the square root of both sides. So this means the velocity at the end is 4.47 meters per second. So we're really using the same concepts as before, but all we're using, all we're adding in is this final step of finding the velocity. So we're gonna talk about our second situation, which is a really realistic situation, and that is the energy lost. So typically for this situation, we actually do a lab with this, where we drop balls, we look at the rebound height, and we figure out the energy lost. Can't really do that right now, so we're just gonna look at some videos, and I'm gonna teach you right now how to do this. So at the very top, remember we have our potential energy, which is also my total energy in the system. So let's just start by figuring out the potential energy. And let's say once again, my mass is one kilogram and my gravity, we're rounding that to 10 meters per second squared. Now you'll see right here at the top, my height is equal to one meter. So let's use our equation to figure out the total energy or the potential energy at the top. This is exactly the same as last problem. So I have a total energy of 10 joules. So remember, this is the energy that has to stay constant the whole time. So as this ball drops, it's gonna drop to the bottom and all that potential energy is transformed into kinetic energy. But when this ball bounces up to the top, it doesn't bounce all the way up to one meter. Instead, it goes up to about 65 centimeters. We're gonna need that in meters. So one thing you're gonna to have to remember to do in all these activities is to convert centimeters to meters. Just move over the decimal, decimal place two to the left. Now, we know that this object has height at this point. It's the highest point that it bounces back, so no kinetic energy. So let's figure, let's figure out this second potential energy 
mass times gravity times height. So my mass stays the same, my gravity stays the same, but now I have a new height, 0.65 meters. So that's going to give me now a potential energy of 6.5 joules. Now you may notice that that's not the same as my total energy. So my total energy in my system is 10 joules. And then my second energy, so from the bounce, is 6.5 joules. So this means that I lost 3.5 joules. So this was lost somewhere at the bottom here, and whether that was sound, whether that was you know the ground moving, think about a trampoline, there was some energy that was lost. So I could do an extension to this problem and figure out the velocity at the bottom, um, lots of different things I can do, but the main point of this is I figured out the energy that was lost. So you should have taken some notes on this. Now what you're going to do is you're going to look at the videos that I showed, which are five different balls. And each of these balls are going to be dropped and then bounce up to a different height. Your ultimate goal is to figure out how much energy was lost. So make sure when you're doing these exercises that you're going back to this flipped lesson so you are able to be successful at this work.